join the newsroom on CNN Philippines. Tonight, visitors begin leaving cemeteries after the annual All Saints Day holiday. Authorities say the observance was generally peaceful. In Marawi, the firefight may be over, but military says a few terrorists remain in the main battlefield. One foreign fighter is arrested. And Anyong Haseo from Ann Curtis. Take a peek at her South Korean vacation with her fiancé, Erwan Yusa. This program is presented by Bank of Commerce, an affiliate of San Miguel Corporation. Good evening, I'm Mitzi Borromeo. The holidays are almost over, but we continue to monitor major cemeteries around Metro Manila. Let's head over first to the Manila North Cemetery. Our AC Nichols joins us live from there. AC, huge crowds there earlier. How are things there now? Well, mid see the rush of visitors here at the Malina North Cemetery is over. We see more people leaving the cemetery than those arriving. As of 9 p.m., the police estimated there are more or less 50,000 people here, which is significantly less compared to the 400,000 crowd that was here at 4 p.m. The gates are free and clear. We're not monitoring a slowdown in movement at the entrance and exit. Still, a police presence is strong all around the vicinity. Now, to those who are planning to come here, be reminded that certain items such as flammable materials and sharp objects are banned and are confiscated at the entrances. Also, several roads outside or uh, those leading to the cemetery are closed to vehicles. The visitors are advised not to bring their cars or even motorcycles because they will not be able to enter. Of course, vendors are taking advantage of the volume of people and have set up stalls all over these streets. Motorists should take note that the parking area is far from the cemetery and the best way to get here is to walk. Back to you. Thank you, AC, and hopefully you can go home soon and get some rest. AC Nichols reporting to us live from Manila North Cemetery. Let's now check the situation at the Manila South Cemetery. Our Anjo Alemario has been monitoring movement throughout the day. Anjo, are people still arriving now? Well, it means that there are now fewer visitors here at the Manila South Cemetery. And as of 9 in the evening, the number of visitors has significantly dropped to 50,000. That's compared to 160,000 visitors we saw late this afternoon. And we actually talked to a cemetery director, Maribel Buesa, and she tells us that there are actually fewer visitors this year compared to last year. It's actually down by 10 to 15 percent. But even with fewer people, security here remains tight. Uh, your bags will still be inspected. And authorities have already confiscated a number of items ranging from uh, painting materials, scissors, and even cigarettes and speakers. And also, it, uh, when it comes to cleanliness, now Bessa says she has deployed people and are roaming around to collect garbage. But just uh, looking here at the entrance and exit area, you can easily see uh, plastic cups and bottles left by those who visited inside. So an appeal to those who are still coming here, clean as you go. But good thing though, Mitzi, with some MMDA personnel outside the cemetery area, they're actually cleaning the whole stretch leading here to the entrance of the cemetery. And we're also seeing still uh, vendors selling candles and flowers, but at a lower price because the holiday uh, is about to end. And of course, uh, generally, according to Besa, it's been generally peaceful here at the Manila South Cemetery, all thanks to the combined efforts, really, of the Manila and Makati police. Mitzi? Good job to them for that. And remember, that is a good to always keep note clean as you go. Thank you very much. Anjo Olimario reporting to us live from Manila South Cemetery. As the night of All Saints Day comes to a close, we're seeing people getting ready to leave Loyola Memorial Park. At least 9,000 people braved the rainy weather to pay tribute to their departed loved ones at the Loyola Memorial Park in Marikina. This is much fewer compared to last year's 20,000 people. Cemetery management says they're also expecting fewer people to spend the night here due to the on and off rainfall. Even the prices of flowers are affected by the downpour. Vendors can't help but compare saying they had to reduce the prices by about 10 to 20 pesos today. The smallest flower arrangement costs 50 to 70 pesos, while the bigger ones range from 100 to 400 pesos. 
tomorrow is not going to be any better since fewer visitors are expected to converge here. Since yesterday, matumal, matumal kami, unlike before. A 30 pa lang, mabili na. Kasi nag stay na sila dyan eh, so dyan na. Eh ngayon wala, nag-uwian na. Dahil yung panahon natin, syempre maputik. Tapos tent lang yan, andyan may tendency maulanan. But what's most important, it was yet another time for families to come together on this important holiday. An Indonesian mounted fighter was arrested by police in Marawi City thanks to the vigilance of a barangay peacekeeping force. The arrest of the Indonesian comes a day after troops killed a straggler attempting to escape the city and a week after the military ended its combat operations against the Mauti group. Our Rex Remitio tells us more. His name is Muhammad Ilham Shaputra, 22-year-old from Medan in Indonesia. He tells police that ISIS leader Isnilon Hapilon convinced him to join their cause in establishing a caliphate in Marawi. According to him, napasabay siya doon sa ano, because he was invited by IH, by Isnilon, na maging uh, part ng uh, struggle dito. He then entered Manila through the airport using a fake passport in November last year. He was involved in a plan to bomb several military camps before their attempt to take over Marawi. But the plan was abruptly postponed when Maute fighters engaged government forces in May. He fought alongside with other terrorists until the Maute group was defeated for good last week. The Indonesian reveals he was still with around 20 other Maute fighters hiding in the war zone until he attempted to escape Marawi through the river that separates the safe zone and the main battle area. When he got into a barangay in the safe zone, he tried to look for someone to help him escape. But he does not know how to speak Filipino and his physical features are distinguishable. This is when Barangay Peacekeeping Action Personnel notice and turn him over to the police. I think this is one of uh, the big blows that uh, was dealt against our enemies kasi ayaw nga nilang may lubabas because of the information na bibigay doon sa kanilang pwesto. He was carrying a 45 caliber pistol, a fragmentation grenade, a mobile phone, in cash in currencies of peso, Saudi Arabian Real, and Indonesian Rupiah. But Guyguyun says Shaputra might not be a fanatic ISIS fighter since he didn't choose to die in the firefight unlike other terrorists. Ang sabi niya is that uh, natakot na siya na, ano, pwede, wala naman silang pinaglalaban na. So he opted to, kan, baka sakaling makapag, uh, makatakas siya. The military, meanwhile, says there's no need to reactivate their combat operations despite the presence of mounted stragglers in a small area. It means that we will have to really uh, continue with our uh, clearing operations and to, we, ha we have to make sure na wala na talagang naiwan ng mga mauti IC sa lugar. He says the resistance is not significant and Marawi is secure from the Maute. In Marawi City, Rex Remitio, CNN, Philippines. Metro Manila Police Chief Director Oscar Albayalde says the observance of Undas was generally peaceful, but they're verifying reports of a possible attack by remnants of Mauta Group. Based on a report, some remnants are allegedly staying with their relatives in Tagig City, and they will allegedly carry out bombing in crowded places. Speaking to CNN Philippines, Metro Manila Police Chief Oscar Albayalde says they have intensified security and police presence in Tagig. We received that information, that is, but uh, that is all for uh, validation. As of this time, we have not uh, validated or confirmed that information yet. However, uh, our intelligence operatives are continuously monitoring, especially the uh, uh, Tagik area, where we uh, added a few teams from the Regional uh, Public Safety Battalion. And, of course, we intensified our uh, Oplan Sita and uh, Oplan uh, uh, or the checkpoints in that area. More local news later. Now here are some top stories from around the world. Eight people were killed and almost a dozen injured in what is considered the deadliest terror attack in New York City since 9-11. The suspect, identified as Saifulo Saipov, plowed through a busy bicycle path near the World Trade Center. He was shot in the abdomen by a police officer and taken into custody. A source says the suspect left a note in the truck claiming the attack was in the name of terror group ISIS. Officials are investigating the incident.
The World Trade Center lit up in red, white, and blue in honor of the victims of the New York attack. The Empire State Building also donned the colors of the U.S. flag. Meantime, U.S. President Donald Trump is calling for more travel security in response to the attack. The president tweeted Tuesday night, quote, I have just ordered Homeland Security to step up our already extreme vetting program. Being politically correct is fine, but not for this, unquote. In other news, the White House holds a press briefing ahead of President Trump's visit to Asia. Mr. Trump will arrive in Manila on November 12th for the ASEAN summit. A senior administration official said he expected, quote, frank and friendly discussions between Presidents Trump and Duterte during their bilateral meeting on November 13th. The official adds that Mr. Trump is, quote, very much looking forward to his first in-person meeting with President Duterte. Coming up, a weather check. We give you a list of provinces affected by tropical depression, Ramil. And an old robotic dog returns from the grave with some new tricks. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break. Good evening to all of you watching us here on Facebook Live. Coming up for you in the next segment of Newsroom, we have more updates from cemeteries as uh, All Saints Day comes so close. We'll take you to Manila Memorial, La Loma, and even the Libingan ng Mga Bayani. Also, President Duterte just returned from his successful visit to Japan. David Santos joins, uh, brings us a story about uh, the achievements and the visit of President Duterte there. Also, business news coming in for you, so stay with us. Many more stories coming your way. And we are getting a lot of greetings from you here on Facebook Live. We want to say hello to all of these people, who all of you are greeting us from around the world. Shushi Mei Shaso is watching from the United States. Moralista, Moralista Dakshani from Singapore. Georgia Noble from Washington, D.C. Bong Herrera from Kuwait. Mahmoud Saka from Dubai. Marisa Kalumpang from Cebu. Leonardo Von Ryan from Kaohsiung, Taiwan. Arnold Aquiler watching from Saudi Arabia. Maria Cristina Villanueva from Osaka, Merstulin from Hong Kong. Also, we have Julius Liano from Dubai. Uh, we also have um, uh, Gina Cardenas watching from Malaysia. Melvi Edelin Reyes says, Happy Halloween from Florida. Harry Lax says, Good morning from Ontario, Canada. Tenkatong watching from UP Los Baños. Uh, he says, Have a peaceful night ahead. Christopher Endaya is watching from Cavite. Byron Yon Messina from Geneva, Switzerland, and uh, Mario Galvin from Saudi Arabia. Thanks for all your greetings. Stay with us until the end of the show. Back in the newsroom on CNN Philippines. No let up yet in rain drenching most parts of the country. So make sure you've got your rain gear on standby. Weather Bureau Pagasa says tropical depression Ramil has maintained its strength while crossing the Kalamian group of islands in Palawan. The storm is moving west toward Vietnam. Storm signal number one remains up over the area and the rest of the northern part of Palawan, as well as southern Occidental Mindoro. These areas will have moderate to occasionally heavy rains and residents should be on alert against possible landslides and flash floods. Other regions are not spared. Ramil is also causing widespread rains and thunderstorms in Metro Manila, Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon and Calabarzon. It's also rainy in the Bicol region, the rest of Mimaropa as well as the Zamboanga Peninsula. The rest of Luzon will have light rain brought about by the northeast monsoon. Meanwhile, the Visayas and Mindanao will have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. We expect same weather conditions at least until tomorrow before the tropical depression exits the country in the early evening. Thousands of Filipinos troop to major cemeteries in Metro Manila. That's despite the bad weather caused by tropical depression Ramil. Over at the Manila Memorial Park in Paranaque, authorities are implementing tight security as visitors continue to stream in to pay their respects to departed loved ones. Notable personalities buried there are former President Corazon Aquino and matinee idol Rico Yan. In La Loma Catholic Cemetery in Caloocan, visitors were advised to bring rain gear. 
Authorities also reminded visitors not to bring banned items inside the cemetery. They should give identification cards to small children and know where police assistance desks are located in case of emergency. Now take a look at this. These are pictures taken from the grave of the late former President Ferdinand Marcos at the Libingan ng mga Bayani in Taguig. Photos show floral wreaths sent by President Duterte and Manila Mayor Joseph Estrada for Marcos. The late strongman was privately buried there on November 16, 2016, 27 years after his death. It sparked controversy and protests across the country. Critics opposed the burial because of the alleged human rights abuses committed during the Marcos regime. President Duterte is back from his two-day working visit to Japan. He describes it as most productive and engaging. Aside from bringing home fresh pledges of up to six billion U.S. dollars in investments, the president also deepens our 61 years of diplomatic relations with Japan. Our senior correspondent David Santos tells us more. Attributing it to Japan's cool weather, President Duterte returning from Tokyo Tuesday night on a pleasant mood and having only good words for the Philippines' former colonizer. Japan is our friend closer than a brother. Japan treats us as a sovereign equal. Hours earlier, the president finally meeting Japan's royal family. Their meeting about a year ago was canceled due to the death of Emperor Akihito's uncle. President Duterte expressing gratitude for Japan's friendship and support to the Philippines. The royal couple's simplicity, he says, is impressive. I have been to many places and uh, palaces of uh, uh, great leaders and people. This is the first time na nakita ko pinakasimpleng palasyo. Sala niya, receiving room, wala kang makita ang picture. It's really a bland thing actually. And he lives very simply. But more than better relations, President Duterte is bringing home pledges of aid and investments worth multi-billion U.S. dollars. The Japanese government's 1 trillion yen or close to 9 billion dollars aid package will largely go to social infrastructure projects including subways and flood control systems. On top of our agenda is vital support for the centerpiece projects under the Philippines Build, Build, Build program. I am committed to work closely with him to ensure that projects proceed soonest and it will be a done, done, done. On top of this, sealed business partnership commitments pegged at about $6 billion. This is more than three times the amount of sealed businesses agreements during my first visit to Japan. The two allies will also intensify defense cooperation to combat violent extremism and transnational crimes. Japan will also help in rebuilding Marawi and will continue to support peace efforts in Mindanao. Apparently, the two leaders set aside certain issues, especially the sticky ones, such as the plight of Filipino comfort women. Uh, all the issues there connected with the war uh, are water under the bridge. Okay. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not being even discussed in polite company. While concerns on North Korea were discussed, but not President Duterte's earlier suggestion, world leaders reached out to Kim Jong-un. No, we just uh, talked about the perils of uh, a war and uh, all others were just uh, incidentals. Aside from the official delegation composed mostly of cabinet members, military commanders who served in Marawi also joined in the Japan trip. The president says it was an opportunity for officers to unwind and do some sightseeing. In Davao City, David Santos, CNN Philippines. San Miguel Corporation is ready to carry out expansion plans for its southern Metro Manila toll roads. SMC's infrastructure unit says it's set to roll out medium to long-term programs that will increase the capacity of the South Luzon Expressway, Skyway System, the E-Expressway, and Southern Tagalog Arterial Road. The company is waiting for the final approval of the government. SMC President and COO Ramon Ang says the massive expansion plan is expected to be completed in three years. It aims to help the Duterte administration in easing traffic woes in the capital.
Tech News Now, Sony's robot dog returns from the pet cemetery. The Japanese company is banking on the irresistible cuteness of its new robot dog, Aibo, to win over consumers. The artificial intelligence-powered hound wags its tail, chases pink balls, and can learn new tricks like giving its owner a high five. Aibo is a rebooted version of a device Sony first launched in the 1990s, and the company has made it appealingly unrobotic. It will go on sale in Japan in January with a hefty price tag of 198,000 yen or around 88,000 pesos. Still ahead, autumn season in South Korea made even lovelier by actress Ann Curtis and fiancé Irwan Yusa. Feel the love through their photos. And local celebrities take their Halloween costumes to the next level. That's up next here on Newsroom. We'll be right back. Good evening to all of you joining us here on Facebook Live. Coming up for you in the final segment of Newsroom Entertainment News. Thanks to all of you who have been sending in your greetings on Facebook Live. We want to say hello to Muhammad Roghani who's watching from Pakistan. Gina Cardines who's watching from Malaysia. Norman Macaldo from San Mateo Rizal. Willie Young, uh, uh, King Abdulaziz from, uh, from watching from the International Airport in Saudi Arabia. Albert Pulmones, who joins us from Malaysia. Rogelio Limbaro from Najran Airport in Saudi Arabia. Fernand Faulkner from Davao City. Daniel Lansang from San Diego, California. Boyet Beleza watching from Doha, Qatar. Melvi Reyes from Florida, USA. Sandra Leader says, good evening. Thank you for sharing the news. Your daily listener watching from Ontario, Canada. Well, thank you for joining us here. Great to have you with us. Uh, we also have Eddie Wozniki III watching from Colorado, USA. Uh, uh, Harry Laxus uh, says they, well, he's talking about the All Saints Day celebration that USA and Canada don't, don't have it, but the British do. Uh, Jan Toy is watching from Cebu City and says, Happy Halloween. Uh, well, we have more stories coming your way. Stay with us until the end of the show. And for more stories, check out CNNPhilippines.com. Welcome back. You're looking at live pictures from the NLEX Traffic Control Center. As you can see, there's heavy buildup of vehicles heading back to Manila. Many are returning from their provinces since it's back to work tomorrow for most Filipinos. So for those coming from the north, brace for heavy traffic and keep your cool. Tonight on Connecting Cities, our James Deacon shows us the fastest and most convenient way to travel down south. Watch this. Hey, hi, I finished work a little early today. You want to go and grab a bite to eat? No, if I leave now, I can also swing by and pick up the kids. Then I'll get you at home. All right, cool. I'll see you soon. Bye. Wow, with a busy schedule and some out-of-town trips, even some out-of-the-country coverage, I haven't had a lot of time with the kids, so I owe them big time. So I'm going to take the rest of the day off, and I'm going to spend it with them. And just to make the most of it, I'm going to get there the fastest way possible. Right now, it's my day off, and so... It's trying to pick up the kids. Well, it's not really a full day off, but finishing early allows me to pick up the kids and do something good with them. And, uh, well, we're heading out there. I got three. We got Alex, Sarah, and Daniel. Alex is the eldest. He's 18. He's already driving. And then we've got Sarah, who's 14, and then Daniel, who's 11, who's driving as well. But that's driving everyone crazy, not the cars. <laughs> I'm not really choosy about where we go. I'm just choosy about the company.
Have you noticed how bad the traffic has been lately? It's like Saturdays now are the new Fridays. Well, at least that's how it feels like. And the Burr months, this is just going to get worse and worse and worse. So any time that you can save on the road is, well, we're truly grateful for. I remember a time not so long ago where underneath I'd have to go and it was hours and hours as I had to crawl through different cities, Pasay, Paranaque, Montelupa, just to get to the south. Now, you can pretty much bypass all of that with the Skyway. It's like we're above everything else and it can take you 10 to 15 minutes and you're there. That used to take like two hours sometimes. Now the importance of connectivity or having roads that sort of connect and mostly bypass through certain cities is you can jump from city to city and save a lot of time and when you have to sort of cross town a lot to do different events and go to work and do this kind of stuff it really helps when you can just sort of be above it all. Well, I'm super excited to be able to spend some time with the kids. Been back-to-back -back trips, and uh, we're all... Wait, hang on a second. I think it's coming up. Hello? Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm on my way. And when Connecting Cities returns tomorrow, James goes on a trip down memory lane as he buckles up for Batangas. Actress and TV host Ann Curtis is taking her goblin fandom to the next level, this time with her fiancé, vlogger and entrepreneur Erwan Youssef. On a series of posts on social media, the two share their vacation photographs in South Korea. This one mimics the famous pose of goblin stars Gong Yoo and Kim Go Yoon. Curtis and Youssef are standing in the middle of a grass field. The couple is expected to tie the knot this year. They got engaged December last year. Local celebrities step up their game in sporting Halloween costumes this year. The family of Hayden Ko and Vicky Bello becomes crayons in time for Trick or Treat. Their child Scarlet Snow again kills everyone with her cuteness as a little violet crayon. TV host Bianca Gonzalez and basketball player husband JC Intal and their son turned into cute yellow minions in Hong Kong. Meanwhile, noontime show hosts also didn't miss a chance to dress up for the occasion. Vong Navarro and Billy Crawford show their bad sides as the Joker and Pennywise the clown from the horror flick It. Main Yaya Dub Mendoza also joined the fun as the bride of Chucky. And that's the newsroom for you this evening. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Thank you for watching. Good night.